Today we're looking at adaptive components. These are objects which update themselves based on their surroundings. For structural objects, this means beams can automatically design themselves based on their adjacent framing. This could allow architects to get a framing plan in seconds. Later in the video, we'll show an entire building in adaptive beams as well as calculations for each member. So here we've got a single adaptive structural beam in timber. It's designed itself as 90 by 45 in grade F7. But at the moment it doesn't have anything to adapt to. So if I change the span, the design size isn't going to change because it doesn't know where to get its load from. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring in another beam. Now both these beams are aware of each other. So if there was some floor on this structure, so these two beams are simply supported, supporting some floor, obviously half the load would go onto one beam and half the load would go onto the other. So if I select one of them, you can see the transparent rectangle is the amount of load that's going into that beam. And if I change it to the other beam, that's the amount of load going into the other beam. So now if I change the span, it will get to a point, there we go, 120, 140. The span is long enough and the load is enough that it's required the adaptive beam to upsize itself to a larger member. This design is based on the worst case of deflection and strength, which I'll show a bit later in this video. But just to finish off this quick illustration, I'll add a third beam. And you can see that the load is distributing evenly between the three. And as you would expect, the middle beam is taking twice the amount of load as the edges. And you can see it's designed itself as a higher beam, a higher size, because of that additional load. So now I'm going to move on to a frame with a few different scenarios made entirely out of simple lines and I'm going to turn all the beams into adaptive beams at once. So there you can see each adaptive beams attempted to design itself to suit the amount of load that it's detected that it needs to support. You can see some in grade F7 won't work because the span and the amount of load is too much in either strength or deflection. And again, if we click quickly run through, you can see this edge beam is taking half the load between the 190 and the 140. This 140 is taking half the load from these two edge beams. This beam is taking half the load from its adjacent parallel structure as well. So is that. So this is the closest beam on one side and this is the closest on the other side, etc. And when it comes up to the biggest one, it's taking a huge amount of load. 
So a quick thing you can do is just change the grade of the timber. So there, F17, you can get every member a design. And a good thing about working with adaptive beams is you can just rip them off and move them about. So say I move this to here, that beam automatically knows that its load width's changed. And if it needs to, its size will change. And you can see the adjacent members also change size as well. So you can just move things about quite easily and have everything around it update automatically. So now if I upscale that to a whole building and also more realistic framing with joists at 450 centers and say I want to get a timber design for that roof. It's a relatively flat roof. I've got different loading schemes here, so metal deck roof. And if I select all the curves, there you go, you've got, just move this index out. You've got a timber design for all these beams. And it only really takes a couple of seconds. So for architects, this is hopefully a pretty useful tool because you can get a quick timber frame design just through simple lines. And you could also get this into Revit or Archicad. There's ways of doing that if people are interested. Now you can see that this beam here, which has a big span, I can't find a solution in F7, so I'm going to try F17. And you'll see all the members have reduced with a higher grade, but it still can't find something in F17. So let's try glue lamp. And yes, I can get something to work in Glue Lama 300 by 45. In fact, as Glue Lama would probably be 65. That's a standard size. So a 270 by 65 GL 18 will work there. Or say I went back to F17. And 45. We know that doesn't work, but maybe a... 2 by 45 works. So yeah, 240 by 90 F17, or in other words, 2 number 240 by 45 F17s will work for that beam there. So to do the first floor structure, I'm just going to copy this component, so I'm going to have it running twice. And I'm going to change the loading to a timber for residential. And just select all those curves. So there you've got your timber frame for level one. Now there's a couple of members that don't work. So just for this example, I'm going to change to glue lamp at level one. Maybe the architect wants an exposed ceiling, seeing that glue lamp. And I should change that to 65, which is a standard glue lamp size. So I'll move on to some more detail for the engineers, but for the architects, the last thing I'll show is the reason we included this index, selected index. So you can verify yourself how much load each of these members is taking. 
You can probably see there's two beams there that seem a bit large and that are these edge beams here because for this particular design that's an internal void so the adaptive component won't pick that up so to verify it if you just scroll along to that beam you can see it thinks it's taking that amount of load whereas really there's almost no load on it so for a couple of outliers like that internal voids I would actually just deselect those two members and just reselect to take it out and you speak to your structural engineer about stuff like that where they have um, outlying situations so as I was saying before the beams design themselves and for the advanced users this won't be available in the basic script but for the engineers out there and if they are after this functionality or they want to contact us please let us know you can get a calculation sheet for each of the timber beams so you can just print this out and put it in your calcs so or comps as they call them in the UK so as you can see as I scroll through the calculation sheet automatically out updates and for each of the 101 members in there you've got a calculation sheet for each one and it also gives you a little graph of the deflection and the moments versus their limits this is to Australian codes at the moment contact us if you need other country codes does a summary of the loads your deflection check your bending calculation and, and it ensures that it's within the limits of the capacity if you think remember. something like this is useful and you can get scripts like this at our website at the end of the beams as well but if you want more so advanced features like just calculation sheets control P that or you might want a steel or concrete solution sheet. similar to this just get in contact with us and we'll be able to help you out Thanks for watching this structured parametrics video. Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful and we'll see you in the next one.